Welcome to worship with St. David's Lutheran Church. Today is Sunday, July 17th. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the serpent who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season. And your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel reading from the 10th chapter of Luke. Now, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, 
he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. So from our Old Testament reading today, Abraham was more than a good host. He did not wait until his guests arrived, but ran out to greet them as soon as he saw them coming down the road. He welcomed them and invited them into his home and set into motion the preparations for a meal. Now this was not just going to be a snack of iced tea and a cheese plate, but a full meal with roasted veal and freshly baked bread. Abraham's wife, Sarah, and the servants shared in the responsibility of gathering all the ingredients, mixing and baking and setting the table, while Abraham spent time with the guests sitting under the shade of a tree. Although that story is not about traditional gender roles of men and women, its pairing with today's gospel unfortunately points us in that direction. So continuing on his journey to Jerusalem, Jesus made his way into a village and stopped at the home of his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Martha welcomed him and his whole traveling entourage into her home. She immediately put on her Martha Stewart apron. She got out her collection of Martha Stewart books for recipes and table setting tips and dived headlong into trying to be the perfect hostess. Before deciding on the menu, of course, she first checked the cupboards to see what ingredients were available. And then she figured out the order in which everything had to be prepared so that everything would be ready at the same time. Should she put up placemats or a pretty tablecloth with matching napkins? Napkin rings or maybe special folding so that they ended up looking like a bird or flower? How about a centerpiece of fresh flowers and greens or maybe a basket of fruit which could double as decoration and food? Better sweep the floor and feed the dog so he doesn't come to the table begging. Then the neighbor came over to borrow an egg but all she really wanted was to see what was going on. The telephone rang, don't forget Lazarus' doctor appointment tomorrow. A text message reminded her of the women's meeting next Tuesday for which she had volunteered to bring the refreshments. Then the other neighbor showed up to drop off some extra robes for the clothing drive that the synagogue was sponsoring. And in the middle of all this commotion, Martha noticed Mary quietly sitting in the living room with Jesus and the other men. Just sitting there on the floor at his feet, listening to what he was saying, devoting her full attention to her Lord. While Martha's blood pressure began rising, you could almost see the steam coming from her ears as she blurted out, Jesus, make Mary help me. And by the way, where was Lazarus? Was he just sitting there with Mary, leaving all the work to Martha? Well, I believe in this story that we get caught up with Mary and Martha focusing on the gender of the sisters and their traditional roles as homemakers. We forget that this episode could also be about the Jameses and the Johns around us, couples, family, even single people like me. At some point in time, we all have days or even weeks or months like this. Things start out simple enough and then just get out of hand. 
We get so busy with so many activities that we hardly have time for ourselves, let alone to set aside for prayer and devotion. Sometimes it seems as though our entire lives are like this. Now, last week, with the dialogue between Jesus and a lawyer and the parable of the Good Samaritan, we talked about neighborliness, loving God and others with our whole self. This love includes taking care of and serving those around us, no matter who they are and what the expectations might be. Then today we have a lesson that seems to say almost the exact opposite. Martha is intense with her service and gets sort of scolded for it, while Mary garners the praise for just sitting and listening to Jesus for devoting her time to the word. What is going on here? Has Jesus changed his mind about what is important from one story to the next? Which is the correct way to express our love for God? Service to our neighbor or devotion to Jesus? Being Martha or Mary? And the answer is a resounding yes. These two stories positioned together in the gospel highlight the tension between service and worship or devotion. With one focus on loving through service, the Samaritan, and the other on loving through devotion, Mary, as opposed to Martha and her serving. But actually we are being shown both sides of the same coin, so to speak. Neither story gives us the whole picture. Each story individually gives us only a partial answer. For clearly, both devotion or worship and service are essential for a whole life in God. They may seem like opposites when in fact they are complements. Now this is not like a compliment, like, hey, you look nice today, but compliment, C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T, like the word complete. The priests and the Levi's lack of service in the parable last week were contrasted to that of the Samaritan inviting us to model service neighborliness as the way of expressing our love of God. Now, unfortunately, verse 42 of today's reading in the most familiar versions of the Bible says Mary has chosen the better part. But the Greek word, which seems to be translated as better, actually means just good so that Mary has chosen a good thing. And this mistranslation, I think, has done much to skew the understanding of this story. Jesus was not claiming that Martha's actions were better than Martha's. We're not claiming that Mary's actions were better than Martha's. It's just stating that they were in themselves good. Jesus was not scolding Martha because she was expressing her love through service, but because she was allowing all the aspects of service to worry and distract her, to pull her in different directions instead of allowing her the opportunity for devotion in addition to serving. Martha got so caught up in her service that she forgot why she was serving in the first place. By comparing one sister's devotion over and against the other's service, Jesus was revealing that while service to others is an important part of being a disciple, time taken out of a busy schedule, even from all that service and doing in the name of Jesus, to sit listen and be open to hearing God's word, to gather at the font to receive the Holy Spirit, to gather at this table to be nourished by Jesus, and to engage in all of these opportunities frequently and regularly, all this is essential for a whole life 
in God. These experiences of worship and devotion strengthen us, inspire us, feed our hearts and minds and souls that we can go out and serve. As we journey in our faith walk, in living the life of discipleship to which we are called, it is not a question of being Mary or Martha. It is in being Mary and Martha. It is in that combination of devotion, worship, and serving that we will find our most complete fulfillment as a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. Ever-present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your Church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ you created all things, visible and invisible. 
Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you reconcile all things, motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind. In the spirit of Bartolome de la Casas, whom we commemorate today, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. If you are communing at home with us today, you may prepare the bread and wine. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. 